This is episode 49 of the A Free Spirit Life podcast. Welcome. Thanks so much for being here today. I'm Shannon Kinney Dew, creator of A Free Spirit Life, the place that invites you to reconnect to your authentic self so that you can live a life that is full of possibility, that is healthy and vibrant, so that you can discover who you are, who you really are, and share your energy and your uniqueness and your gifts with the world. I am a holistic life and spiritual coach, Reiki master, and a human design specialist. And in this episode today is all about mindful parenting and human design. I am so excited to share with you how human design has helped me in my own parenting and how it will help you in yours. So if you have children, if you have grandchildren, if you love children, (laughs) you're going to love this episode because I'm going to tell you about the five energy types in human design, why it matters, and why why especially it is so important to start using this information as a tool to raise mindful, authentic, empowered children. Now more than ever before, we are ready for this. And the children coming into the world right now are designed to live their authentic self. Because you know what? I've spent the last several years guiding women to reconnect to their true selves. So many of us, that's been the nature of our life, right? We have been pulled further and further away from who we naturally are based on societal pressures, based on how we were raised, based on challenges, pressures, traumas that we've taken on throughout the years. And we learned how to doubt ourselves. We've learned how to judge what makes us unique as personality flaws, as something that's really wrong with us instead of something to celebrate. And when you learn about human design, you realize and remember what you knew about yourself coming into the world, how you used to behave, or how you even act now, but maybe didn't feel totally comfortable in that role or confident in, in that way, or uh, you still felt that there was something the matter with you. And so rather than spend all these years rediscovering our true self and reconnecting connecting to our authentic way of being, let's raise our children to stay in tune and in touch with their natural ability to be that. You know, when you see children young, especially 10 and younger, you see their magic, you see their wonder, you see their joy, you see their presence, you see how they just walk through life empowered how they walk through life as creative beings. They jump into things with two feet forward. They try, they experiment, they ask questions, they're curious. And they don't question themselves. They don't doubt themselves. They they aren't terrible to themselves with their thoughts as we are trained to be as we get older. And so think about how you were at five, at six, at seven, at eight, at that precious age of nine, where you still believed in magic, where you still believed in things that were unseen, where you still believed that if you just tried hard enough that you could fly, that you could chase the squirrels and catch them. Having three boys of my own, that's one of my favorite things in the world is that there's still this like hope that one day they're going to catch that bird or that squirrel in the yard. They believe in themselves. And they believe in magic, in wonder, in life. And so my goal as a mindful parent is to practice using human design as another tool so that I can practice parenting my children in a way that keeps them connected to their true self because we know how different our kids are right? So that's what the show is about today. I'm going to dive deeply into the five energy types. And specifically, if you are raising one of those energy types, 
the things to watch out for and the ways that you can be mindful in how you school them, how you raise them, um, in their health and in their sleep, how knowing their energy type will help with especially those topics. Before I dive into the show today, in a previous show, I mentioned that I would be offering a mindful parenting and human design workshop. And in true manifester fashion, I am realizing that the things that I want to initiate, um, I don't have the energy for follow through because I am booking up with one on one sessions. And I'm really loving those so much. I want to continue doing that. So I'm not going to put my energy into a full on workshop just yet. That's why I have this episode. I want you to get your notebook and use this as workshop time so that you can really learn what you need to learn about the energy types. So if you don't know anything about human design, you can go to the previous episodes where I explained Uh, what human design is and went through the five energy types. But I will give you a little short overview specifically for the children in this episode. So grab a notebook if you'd like or simply just allow my words to soak in. If you don't know your children's energy types yet, go to mybodygraph.com and you can enter for free your birth information to look up everyone's energy type in your family. So write that down, mybodygraph.com. You can even pause and go do that now so you have that information as you're listening. You will need the birthday, the year, the exact time, and the place that each person was born. If you do not have the exact time, you can do a rough guess or you can try 6 a.m., noon, and 6 p.m. on that day. Uh, it will change different aspects in the chart, but you should be able to at least get the energy type. You're going to see this crazy graph that you may not understand how to read, uh, but mainly look at what the energy type is and the authority. Those are always really good to have as you're learning human design. Also, as a thank you for the month of November, if you could take a moment to go to iTunes or Spotify, wherever you're listening to this podcast, and go leave me a review, rate the show, and subscribe to the show, it will help get more followers to A Free Spirit Life. And as a thank you, simply screenshot your review, send me an email, shannon at afreespiritlife.com, and I will enter you in for a drawing for a personal one-on-one human design reading. So if you can get that to me by the end of November 2020, you will be entered to win. And the first week of December, I will announce that winner. So thank you so much for doing that, for sharing the show with your friends and taking the time to leave that review. If you know that you'd like a one-on-one human design reading or would like to gift one to someone this holiday season, I do have gift certificates and one-on-one sessions available for the month of December. They are filling up fast though. So um, take a look at afreespiritlife.com and click on work with me. You'll see my one-on-one sessions there. All right, my friends. So as a reminder, human design is an integration of Eastern and Western astrology, the Chinese I Ching, the Kabbalah Tree of Life, and the Hindu Chakra system. It also incorporates quantum physics. So it's this beautiful modality that shows you your energy blueprint and who you really are your energy field and what you're here to do in this lifetime based on your astrology, based on your birth information. Because as we are born, the moment we take our first breath, we are imprinted by the universe. And depending on the gates and where they are, and depending on the planets and where they are, depending on where you are in that moment of your first breath, will determine the imprints that you take in your energy blueprint. Now, there is way more to human design, but I want to keep it simple for you that, you know, if you've ever done the Myers-Briggs or any other personality assessment tool or the Enneagram, usually you take a quiz and you try to answer it as honestly as you can to come up with the particular number or description of your personality. 
What's amazing about human design is that we get so conditioned away from our natural way of being that we're not quite sure who we are. We think we have an idea of who we are unless you have spent years of self-discovery and inner work. A lot of times we're operating from a place we think we're connected to our true self and yet we rediscover, especially in human design, where we've been conditioned to be someone we're not. And so you don't have to take a quiz. You just need to know your birth information. And then you need to stay open and you need to trust. Now, I have one of the gates that is called the gate of doubt. So for me, it's also the gate of curiosity. But if you look at it in terms of doubt, I spent a good portion of my life with self-doubt. So I kind of turned that ability to doubt things inward. And that wasn't healthy for me because it kept me from really shining and being my true self and stepping fully into my power. And so as I started to learn to break free of that self-doubt and to use that doubt more as curiosity and wonder, it allows me to question things. So I, I am skeptical by nature. And I'm, I'm not easily fooled. And so when I learn things, something new like human design, my first initial reaction is, how can this be true? Does this really make sense? Is this just, you know, fake? And, and, I, and I go through the questioning and the doubt and the wonder. But I also have an open head center, which means I'm very open minded when I allow myself to explore and learn and and try it out for myself. And now that I am an official human design specialist, I'm certified, and especially after reading so many charts of people I know intimately, I am blown away every single time at how accurate the chart is. And so my doubt is now just simple wonder. It's just this amazing tool that I want everyone that I can reach to know how it can change your life. So learning about your human design wakes you up from being disconnected from who you truly are. It gives you this expansive and truer story of who you are and why you're here. It helps you stay connected to your creativity, your imagination, your purpose, possibility, peace, flow, abundance, wholeness, and the freedom to be your truest, most authentic self. And so as we're relating this to children, do we want our children to stay connected to that joy, creativity, wonder, imagination, possibility, peace, wholeness? Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes, we do. And how do we do that? How do we help our children not take on all the limitations all the self-doubt, all the anxiety, the fear, the things that stifled our own creativity, the things that we thought were weird or that made us feel there was something wrong with us. How can we keep our children in that place of magic? How can we help them raise their vibration? Well, first of all, I truly believe in mindful parenting. It starts with ourselves. So it's really important that you understand your own chart, that you get a reading, and that you trust in it, that you find out how you've been conditioned away from your true self, and that you take the steps little by little, day by day, to practice being in your power, being connected to your creativity, being connected to your heart and to your gifts. Because if we are lost in a state of anxiety, confusion, self-doubt, worry, anxiety, did I say anxiety twice? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've said it many times because isn't that the state we're living in? I mean, everyone you meet and everywhere you go and how you feel at night is anxious, right? We get stuck in our heads. And the thing about human design is it gives us the tools to practice not being so stuck in our heads, to learn how to trust our guts again, to learn how to trust in who we are. And that's what our children naturally do until they don't, until they see us modeling all the anxious behaviors, the self-doubt, the worry, and the disconnection to our own self. So the first practice in mindful parenting is to work on yourself. Do the inner work. Find practices in meditation, journaling, yoga, 
creativity. Allow yourself to believe in wonder and possibilities again. And then your children will see and continue to stay connected to that themselves. And the next step is to learn their charts, to learn how their energy types work and how their differences make them their greatest assets, how their differences are actually their gifts in this world. Because who you believe yourself to be and the filter you see through sets the tone and the direction for your whole life. So if you believe that there's something wrong with you, if you believe that you're not good enough, if you believe that you aren't creative, your thoughts become form. That is the filter in which you see yourself and in turn in which you see the world. And so we want our children to believe in themselves. We want them to believe in wonder. We want them to believe in their creativity. We want them to stay connected to presence, to joy, to peace and enthusiasm for life. And so watch your tendency. What are you thinking? What do you think about yourself? Do you believe in yourself? Are you ready to help your children stay connected to their authentic self? Let's do this. And let's start with the generators. So the generators in human design are also known as the alchemists, and they make up about 40% of our population. They have internal sustainable energy that comes from their sacral. They have creative force, life force, workforce energy. And when they find work or passions that light them up, they have the internal sustainable energy to do that work. They tend to work more linearly and Typically, you'll find them in nine to five jobs. They respond to the work at hand and they get the work done. So if you are raising a generator, your generator has internal sustainable energy that they need to learn how to access. When they have a defined sacral, this is their superpower. And so they are really good at trusting their gut. And so as they start to get older, it is your job to help them learn to stay connected to their gut and learn to trust it. Our head should never make the final decisions. Our head is great at bringing in ideas and imagination and working through concepts and working through problems even. But the head can only do so much. It's the gut for the generator that helps them make the right decision that is in line with their natural energy, and it's going to create more flow and abundance and ease in their life. So if you notice your generators tend to think or overthink or get stuck in their heads, um, if they do experience anxiety, most likely they're thinking a lot, they're getting stuck in their mind, and so you want to make sure that they know how to exercise or burn their physical energy because otherwise that physical energy gets gets lodged in there because they have such high mental energy too. They need to burn both throughout the day. They need to burn their physical energy and their mental energy. So if they're not getting um, their mental or physical energy burned, they can easily get stuck in the head and kind of get disconnected from their gut. They'll be confused on how to make the best decisions for themselves. And they'll also have trouble sleeping too because they haven't burned all of that energy throughout the day. So teach your generator children how to answer yes or no questions. Your generators have this amazing ability to know with their gut with an answer like a uh-huh or an uh-uh. And we as adult generators, we've been conditioned to answer politely, yes, mm-hmm, um, I think so. And that's not really the guttural response that you really came into this world with. So if you're confused and stuck in your head and your child just is, you know, has a big decision they have to make, maybe they need to decide if they're going to continue with band or if they're going to try a different instrument or they're going to try out for a sport or trying to, to figure out what's, you know, what their feelings are, start by asking them yes or no questions and have them only answer with an uh-huh or an uh-uh. So, you know, if you have a son, are you a boy? Uh-huh. Are you 10? Uh-huh. Are you a girl? Uh-uh. Do you like pizza? Uh-huh. 
uh, and ask them, you know, basic, simple questions as a way to turn on their sacral energy. This turns on their gut. And once you can tell that they're really getting into it and they're answering honestly and quickly without thinking, you can start asking them the deeper questions. Well, do you like playing clarinet? Uh huh. Do you want to play drums? Uh huh. And and help them feel what it feels like to be connected to that sacral energy. Feel what it feels like when you're making decisions with your gut and help them learn to trust in that. And you can do it with simple things at first, like, do you like pizza? Uh Uh-huh. Do you want pizza tonight? Uh Uh-uh. Do you want pizza next week? Uh Uh-huh. And so, you know, basic things like food, um, what to wear, um, what activity to do, what subject to study, whatever it is, help them connect with their gut with those uh uh-huh or uh uh-uh questions. Help them burn energy in healthy ways. Help them learn how to interpret their frustration. So the generators, when they're not in alignment or when they're, they're upset about something in life, they get really frustrated. And you'll find that a lot of times generators have to work through plateaus. So if you have a child who maybe gives up too easily, help them learn that sometimes when they get frustrated, that's their sign to have patience with themselves and work through it. I have a generator child and I notice that when he is doing something that feels too hard, he gets really mad at himself or really frustrated at the situation. And so sometimes we just have to slow it down or take a break or breathe through it, right? Uh, Sometimes we'll just say, hey, let's get back to this tomorrow. But really watch their Um, if they tend to give up easily and not want to work through hard things, you know, give them the space to understand that and to let them know that when we're frustrated like that as a generator, that is our sign that we're doing something that feels uncomfortable. We're doing something that's hard, but you can do hard things. And so do you need a break? Uh Uh-huh. Do you want to get back to this later? Uh Uh-uh. You know, (laughs) whatever. When they learn that when they get frustrated, that's they're kind of hitting a plateau. This will be such a powerful tool as they get older because there's going to be so many moments for them where they have to decide, is this something that's just too hard and I don't like it? Or it's just hard and I want to give up because you want your, your generators to learn how to move through things that are hard and how to move through that frustration so that they can go beyond that plateau and then feel really good about themselves on the other side. Wow, they accomplished something that they, they, you're really proud of themselves about now, you know? And I'll give an example. My son is a generator, and I have three boys, and they're actually all different. So that's why um, I'm so excited to share this with you because I'm, I'm raising all different energy types. But my one of my sons is a generator, and he used to think he was really bad at math, and he used to hate math. And we are now homeschooling. Uh, since COVID, we tried digital schooling. So we we are brand new homeschooling parents. And um, this is really helping me in my homeschooling because I can see the different ways that the kids learn best. And so as a generator, he needs time to work through the math. And I can tell when he wants to give up because it gets too hard and and he gets frustrated. And instead of forcing or pushing through, sometimes we take a break. Sometimes we just, you know, go get a snack and come back and try it again. But for the first time in a long time, he said to me, Mom, this is the first time ever that I really like math. And oh, my God. I mean, that was like as a parent, (laughs) it's like one of my favorite things to hear because I could see the confidence in him coming back. And that's what I want in him is for him to believe in himself and for him to believe that he can move beyond hard things. And had he been at school, which is, you know, typically where they have to move on beyond, you know, maybe the speed that is the right speed for him. He always felt behind in math and felt like he wasn't good at it. And yet now that we have a little more time to work through it, I can see that he's proud of himself and he actually is believing a new thought. He is seeing himself through a different filter, one that is of a higher vibration, that's more positive and that's more clear that he does have a mind for math. We just have to find how to best work through it. So it's been powerful, but teaching him that his frustration means 
we need to work through this instead of we need to give up. Okay, so give your generator children recognition so that they really trust in those plateau moments that they can move beyond them, that life isn't always about succeeding and succeeding and and, and getting a win, that there really are for generators, especially these moments of we we work hard, then we hit a plateau and we're kind of stuck for a while. And then we work hard again and we feel really good and we accomplish something and then we are stuck for a while. And that's a really great tool for our children to learn. Another thing that's really great for your generators is give them things to respond to. Generators naturally respond to life. So my husband and I, I'm a manifester. My husband's a manifesting generator. We both have a lot of manifesting energy. We initiate things. We can think of an idea and we just go for it. And You know, there was a time where I used to tell my generator child, like, well, just go do something, like think of something that you want to do. Well, that doesn't really work for him as well as offering him things to respond to. He then can look at a list of hobbies and and it gives him an idea and then he's off and running. But just that little tweak with my generator has been huge and it's empowering for him. So that way he doesn't feel like, well, God, I can't think of anything like they're telling me to do. I, I don't know what to do. Instead, he's responding and he's acting more in alignment with his design, with the way his energy works best. Lastly, for the generator child, make sure, as I talked about, they need to burn their energy, their physical and mental energy. Make sure that they're going to bed tired. If they go to bed where they haven't been burning that physical or the mental energy, they will feel restless, they will feel frustrated, and they'll have trouble either falling asleep or staying asleep. So generator children need to go to bed after they've burned a lot of that energy so that they can feel satisfied after a long day. They have so much energy that needs to be burned, and that's when they feel most at home, most in alignment is when they feel satisfied, where they can hit the pillow and feel like, man, that was a good day because I burned all my energy, and now I can sleep. Moving on to the manifesting generator. There are about 30% of manifesting generators in our population, and they are also known as the time benders. Very similar to the generators. They have this internal sustainable energy that comes from their sacral, and they have a lot of energy to burn, especially when they are doing passions or work that light them up. The difference between them and the generators is they are the multitaskers. They're kind of the quantum leapers um, of our uh, energy designs. So they really tend to be people and children who have a lot of interests, a lot of hobbies, a lot of ideas. They like to bounce from here to here to here, back over here, over there. They like to bounce through and between and all around their different projects, their hobbies, their work. And so for your manifesting generators, they have a lot of creative energy that they need to express and they really need to be able to move with the flow of their creativity. So the worst thing you can do for your manifesting generators children is to say, would you just pick one thing and stick with it? Could you just focus on this one thing and stop bouncing from this to this? Because that crushes their creative flow and their little spirits because that's not how they're here to naturally operate. They learn best from the freedom to flow with their creativity. So allow these children to make messes. Allow them to have places where they can leave unfinished projects out so that they can come back to them and then stop and come back to them and then stop. Because they have the manifesting energy. They have a channel from their sacral to their throat, which allows them to have that manifesting energy and the generating energy. So they're going to have a lot of ideas. They're going to come up with a lot of ideas of things that they want to do and think up and they want to explore and they want to try. And then they also have the internal energy to make those things happen, to follow through with them. So watch your children. If they tend to manifest a lot and don't generate as much, that means they come up with tons and tons and tons and tons of ideas and they start and start and start and start and start projects, but they never finish. Help them finish. 
they naturally have the energy to generate, which means to follow through, to finish what they start. But if they're just manifesting, they might be living a little bit out of balance with their aligned energy. So really help them um, follow through. So, you know, they still should be able to have several projects going at once. But if you notice that tendency to start yet another thing, what happens is eventually they just become busy doing nothing. And the satisfaction for them is going to come when they actually follow through and finish some of the things that they've started. So teach your children how to be aligned with their creative power, how to follow their creative flow, and how to respond to things, how to follow through with the things that they've started. Also, they need to learn how to work with other people because their natural tendency, because they can do so much, they might start to move into adulthood thinking they can do everything on their own. But eventually, that's simply going to lead them to burnout. So teach your children how to work as a team. Um, Teach them how to ask for help. Teach them how to work together, but allow them to use their creativity to guide them. You also want your manifesting generator kids to be familiar with their frustration. If they hit plateaus, it's very hard for these kids. They have so much energy to wait, but they do need patience. And so if they're never um, patient with themselves in the waiting or the plateau when they feel stuck, uh, teach them how to be patient in those moments. Um, That's going to go really far for them in life. Don't shut down their need to be busy. A lot of times, for anyone who's not a manifesting generator, it might look like crazy making to you. Um, But my husband's one, and he literally just can go from project to project to project. He bounces from here to there to there. And to anyone else, it might look crazy. It may look chaotic. But it works for him, and it's the best way that he can operate. He needs the freedom to operate in that fashion. And so your children need that too if they're manifesting generators. So don't try to make them slow down. (laughs) Don't tell them to focus on one thing and and really um, be okay if they need to be busy most of the time because that's just the way they operate. They need to burn that energy throughout the day and they need to do more than one thing at a time. They also need to learn how to trust their guts. So they are definitely like the generator in that uh uh-huh, uh-uh, Ask them yes or no questions. Help them really get in tune with their gut and learn to trust it, never to make their final decisions with their head. And remind them to play. I think manifesting generators of all the types tend to get pretty um, serious about their ideas and the projects that they are flowing through and you know of course your children are playing uh, but as they get older they um, can get pretty serious about their projects and about the things that they want to manifest and create and so teaching them to make time and space for play for relaxation for fun without always having to have an outcome or a project to produce is going to be really great for them as they get older and feel the pressures that can come um, their sleep they should go to bed really really tired just like the generator they need to burn 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 their mental and physical energy and if they don't man If you notice that your kids are not burning their energy, if they're playing video games and they're not getting their exercise, they're not using their creativity throughout the day, if they're sitting in digital school for a long period of time, make sure they're somehow getting exercise, somehow getting out, somehow getting their creative flow going and having the freedom It's really important, the freedom to just do their own thing because they will go to bed and they'll have all this energy that needs to go somewhere and it's just like ricocheting in their body. It's just flying all over, um, keeping them awake, keeping their mind just mentally chatting and they will have trouble sleeping. Also, the one thing I did forget to to mention that I think is really important, manifesting generators can experience a lot of frustration, they can also experience anger. And so really teaching your children who have anger, who get frustrated that leads to anger, um, teach them how to express their anger in healthy ways. Because, you know, we all need that. 
And so many of us were raised to suppress our anger, that anger is bad, that we should hide it. But for those especially manifesting generators, and then now I'm going into manifestors who typically naturally explode and get angry, they need tools as children on how to express that anger in healthy ways to release it so that they're not stuffing it or hiding it or thinking that they're bad in some way because they feel it. It's a natural feeling for them when they're living out of alignment in some way. So allow them to celebrate who they are and celebrate their differences and learn how to express their feelings in healthy ways. The next energy type is the manifester. They're also known as the initiator. They spark change. They are the trailblazers they get the ball rolling. They are the natural leaders. So if you are raising a manifester, I am a manifester and my one of my sons is also a manifester. Your manifester children, there's only 8% in the population. And so if they're in a classroom of 20 to 25 people, there may be only two, maybe one manifester in the class, maybe three, but really they feel different. And they are. They are different. Their auras work differently. Their energy works differently. They have big energy fields. In fact, the other day, I was walking in my bedroom and my little manifester was in there, but it was pitch black. And I literally could feel his aura before I got to him. It was like a a wall vibrating. It was like it pushed me back. It literally pushed me back. And I had not, I've, I've seen it before when I lay with him, but I hadn't felt it that strongly before. And it was just crazy. People can feel their auras uh, when they're around you and when they're in the classroom and when they're in the family. Sometimes you'll even notice you can feel it like you can sense that they're coming. <laughs> And sometimes their aura um, pushes people away and sometimes their aura just sucks people and draws them in. It just simply depends on how your energy matches with that manifester. Um, These kids are powerful and they've been born with this powerful energy. But in our society, we get really, ooh, we freak out if kids have a lot of power. We freak out if they defy us in any way, if they're not obeying, uh, if they're not following the rules. And, you know, these kids are really not here to follow the rules. They're here to make their own. How do you do that? How do you raise children who aren't here to be told what to do? Well, for one thing, of course, we need to help them learn how to fit within society. We need them to follow laws so that they're safe. And so you're going to have to discern what works best for you and your family. But it's so, so important that you do not crush their little spirits because what happens is if we try to control manifestors in too much, they either become complete people pleasers where they simply obey just to Um, please you and to please everyone, but they really lose touch with their power when they do that. Or they become completely rebellious and they'll just fight you tooth and nail about everything and they're going to do it anyway regardless. So to keep a healthy relationship with your manifester, give them a long rope, uh, build trust with each other, and teach them how to communicate with you. So give them choices, but rather than you always telling them no, that's like the worst word for a manifester to hear especially, um, how can you work with them and really get in tune with yourself? Why am I saying no to this? Is this because is this a safety thing? Is it because I'm trying to control them? Is it because I'm just mad that they're not listening? You know, really pay attention. When can you say yes? When can you trust that they know how to handle things. You know, little manifestors are like little adults. They come into this world knowing things. They know how to be a leader. They know how to walk through life in a lot of ways. And so we need to learn to trust them. And we need to help them connect with their power and stay connected to it so they trust themselves. So give them a lot of freedom and teach them how to inform you when they're going to do something. So an example, my little manifester loves to play in the woods. And we live in an area that has a lot of woods. And yet I I need to know if he's going out in the woods, because if something were to happen to him, or if I couldn't find him, I really want to know where he is. But I do give him a long rope because I do trust him. And he's really good at 
playing in the woods. He's just excellent and loves it. It, it. It's where he lights up, where he feels creative, where he feels powerful. And so we have this agreement that if he's going to go play in the woods, one, usually he plays with his friend or his brother, so he's not out there alone. It's not very far, by the way. It's right outside our door. But he needs to tell us. He just needs to tell me this is where he's going. This is what he's doing. This is what his plan is. If I were to say, no, you can't play in the woods, no, you can't do this, and constantly tried to control him, he would eventually try to sneak in the woods and do it anyway without telling us. Well, now we have this agreement. He does tell us where he's when he's going, and it works out really well. It is not a cakewalk with the manifestors. They have a lot of fiery energy. Um, It can be exhausting, honestly, because they really can push your buttons. So just be patient with them. You want them to stay connected to their power. And so find a way that works for both of you. Uh, understand that your manifester has a lot of creativity and they really need a lot of time of uninterrupted time, uninterrupted time to follow their creative flow. So, you know, if they are in a regular school situation or if they're on the computer uh, a lot, make sure they're getting a lot, a lot of downtime after school to just play, to just be creative, to just go with the flow wherever it takes them. It's so, so important. I mean, all of our kids play is huge. And it's also really important for those who have this internal creative flow. And the only way for them to really stay connected to it, to listen to it, to learn to trust it, to follow it, is to be uninterrupted with it. So they need a lot of alone time. They need a lot of alone time to follow where their creativity takes them. These kids do not have internal sustainable energy like the generators. So I told you about 70%. There's 40% generators and 30% manifesting generators. 70% of our population has internal sustainable energy, lots of energy for work, for action, for creating things. Our manifestors are 8%. They do not have internal sustainable energy in their sacral. So they need time for rest. They need time for creativity. They need downtime. They're not necessarily going to have the same energy as the generators. So if you're a generator and your partner's a generator and you're raising um, a manifestor, Remember, they may not always have the same energy flow as you. They may not be go, go, go all the time. They may need more downtime or rest time. And you'll have to be in tune with that as you're raising them. And then lastly, make sure that they're going to sleep before they get tired. Because they have an open or undefined sacral, that actually means they're absorbing and taking on the energy of others. So you might say, oh my God, my manifester never rests. He never naps. He never is tired. Well, that's because he's actually amplifying the energy of the generators around him. So my manifester does the same thing. He takes in all this generator energy and he actually acts like a generator. However, if you got him out of their energy field and you get them to lay down flat and read and um, rest, they will finally start to release that energy that they've taken on in the day and realize just how tired they are. So manifestors should go to bed 30 to 60 minutes before they're tired. And if your kids are like mine, he will fight it. He will say, I'm not tired, I'm not tired, because he feels that energy that he's taken in and he feels energized. But if he doesn't learn how to have a good bedtime ritual and go to bed before he's tired, that will lead to burnout as he gets older because he'll always push too far beyond his edge and he'll be using energy he doesn't have or she have. And then that can lead to health problems down the road. So teach your manifestors now how to go to bed early, how to have a nighttime ritual where they read or listen to music or a meditation and release the energy so they will feel tired. Okay, the fourth energy type, the projectors, also known as the orchestrators. They are our little guides. They are great managers, and they're 
they're actually, you'll notice they're kind of rule followers. It's really sweet. They really notice the rules in society, and sometimes they'll understand that these rules aren't working. Um, but they always kind of have this ability to see, to keep people safe, to or to see how things could work better or work differently. And so I also have a projector son, and he's the one that always tells us, like, you know, if one of my sons is watching too many shows when he only agreed to two and he's now on his fourth show, or if somebody's not wearing their seatbelt or somebody didn't brush their teeth, he's always that kid who just, you know, is keeping everyone in check and um, really takes rules pretty seriously. Uh, Projectors, there's about 20% of projectors in our world, and they also do not have sustainable energy. Energy, which means they are like manifestors. They have an open sacral and they take on the energy of others. So projectors need to have a lot of alone time, a lot of downtime and a lot of rest so they can get in tune with their own feelings and they can feel connected to who they are and they can learn to value themselves for being who they are. So they have a lot of insight. And you want as a parent to a projector, you want your projectors to feel like their insights are valued in your family. They naturally have this inclination to wait to be invited. So if you notice that they're a little bit quieter in family discussions, or they wait to share their thoughts and ideas, really make sure that you're inviting them to share their ideas. Ask them questions. Recognize them and their ideas. My projector is our middle guy. And so, you know, what happens is everyone else can be so loud around him. And sometimes his voice isn't heard. And so we as parents of projectors need to listen to that, pay attention to that, and stop and ask them, well, what do they think about this? How are they feeling? What have they been up to today? So I know that when I make a point to say, hey, show me what you've been working on. Oh my God, he lights up and he is so excited to show me and he'll, he'll, you know, show me everything. But if I miss that opportunity, then he's not feeling valued. He's not feeling recognized. So make sure you're taking the time to ask questions and invite your projectors to participate. We want them to recognize their gifts and to value themselves because they are the guides of our world. They are the people that we want to go to to ask for their opinion because they always know just what to say. And what happens to projectors if they don't feel heard, if they don't feel like people value them, they get very bitter. And bitterness is a sign that they're not living in alignment with who they are. And as they get older, they'll feel like no one cares. No one cares about them. No one cares about their ideas. No one hears them. No one listens to them. And so let's make sure our projectors know now as children that they are honored, that they are valued, and that we do want to listen to them and that we do want to invite them to participate. Your projectors take on a lot of energy in the day. They are not necessarily here to work. Manifestors, projectors, and I'll go into reflectors in a minute, don't typically like nine to five traditional work hours because they need more freedom to flow and they need more downtime. They just don't have that internal energy to work like that. So if your projector wants to be their own boss or they're interested in entrepreneurship or they um, don't have the same energy level as you, please honor that in them. They should not have to rush and push the way that generator types need to push. They need naps. They need rest. And if they're going to move into, you know, work, and when they work eventually, two to three hours a day can be a good schedule for our projectors. So don't pressure them to be like the generators. Really honor their need for rest and downtime. And then again, let them go to bed 20, 30, 60 minutes before they're tired so that they can release the energy that they have taken in throughout the day and so that they can get a good night's rest. 
And lastly, our reflectors. There is about 1% of reflectors in our population. They are the barometer. They literally help us see how we're living and they can feel their environments. And so all of their centers are open so they can easily take in the energy and feel the energy of the environment and the people they're around. So for your reflectors, they're also a lunar being, which means they have to learn how to wait to make decisions based on the cycle of the moon. Um, teach them how to connect with the moon, teach them the phases of the moon, and even help them journal about how they feel at different phases of the moon. That would be so amazing as children to learn that because that will be so helpful for them as they get older. But they need a lot of time to make decisions and they need time in general. So really be patient with your reflectors and give them the time. You never want to rush them or have them make a decision right away. They need time to know if the decision is correct for them because they can take on the energy of the places and the people around them. Their environment is very important. So teach them how to understand the environment in which they live in and how they feel in that environment. Teach them how to feel what it feels like when they're not in the right environment. Teach them to be in tune with that. And it goes for people too. When they're around supportive, caring, good people, they're going to feel better. Um, if they're around the wrong people, they're not going to feel as good. So have them learn how to be in tune with that when they're making friends. Because having close friends and people they can trust and rely on is very important for reflectors. So help your children create meaningful, lasting friendships and help them get in tune with how they feel with these types of friends and with these types of friends and in this environment and in this environment. Um, help them learn how to talk through their feelings when they're looking for clarity. So these kids may talk a lot. They may need to talk to a lot of people in order to get connected with how they're feeling. And that's okay. Honor their need to talk. Honor their need to wait. Honor their need for consistency. So if you are a parent that doesn't really care so much about consistency, if you like to flow and, and move around a lot, um, just know that reflectors really thrive best in consistency, in a stable environment, with stable people. So help them feel a sense of consistency in their in their day-to-day -day life. Also, help them learn how to be a screen, not a sponge. So what that means is they can easily absorb the energy of the environment and the people around them. And so help them learn how to take that in, how to sift through, how to feel things without holding on to it and carrying it or soaking it in. And that takes some practice. If we're empaths, you'll know if you have an open emotional center, you'll tend to be an empath. And you know if you're an empath because you'll know if you are around somebody negative and then all of a sudden you've taken in that negativity and now you feel really negative, that's an example of sponging or soaking in their energy and holding on to it. So learning how to feel it without taking it on. Um, that's going to be really powerful for your reflector kids. They need a lot of alone time also, and they also need to go to bed before they're tired to release all that energy that they've taken in throughout the day. So that is an overview of the five energy types, a little bit of information about each one. And if you're raising these children, you know these children, pay attention to how little tweaks can help you see that their differences are their gifts. That if you honor their need for more creative freedom or a little bit of mess to bounce from project to project or their need to go to bed earlier or their need to have a lot of rest and downtime, see what happens. See if it makes your parenting a little bit more ease-filled. And when I call it mindful parenting, it's really about 
being intentional, being present, becoming more aware of the needs of each child, becoming more aware of the dynamics in your own family, becoming more aware of energy and how it's operating, how it's getting depleted or how you're getting depleted, how you can best recharge, how you can teach your kids how to best recharge. So everyone just feels better. Everything just flows more freely. Everyone feels more in tune with that natural way of being, with their own sense of wonder, creativity, ease, joy, so that they can feel healthier, so that they can sleep better, so that they can feel whole and complete. And I think one of the most important things we can do for ourselves and for our children is to help them learn that What is different about them, what they think is wrong with them, what they think isn't enough is actually their gifts. It's actually why they're here. And if they can learn to step more fully into it, feel empowered by it, they are going to feel happier and healthier in life. And they're going to be able to change the world with the gifts that they're here to share. Rather than spending 20 plus years healing from self-doubt or healing from the disbelief in themselves or creating a new filter where they can see possibilities again or reconnect to their true self, they will stay connected to their true self. We want them to stay connected to that. And that's what mindfulness and mindful parenting with human design is all about. I know that's a lot of information. If you've stuck with me through this, I am so proud of you. I am so grateful for you that you're interested in this. I would love to hear from you. What children are you raising? What are their energy types? What is one of your takeaways from this episode? Email me, Shannon at a free spirit life.com. Also, if you are interested in setting up a one on one human design session, I do think it's important to get your own reading first. But if you're like, oh my God, I've got to know about my kids, I am offering mini readings for children. It's actually part of your session. So I would do a one-on-one session for you. And then there's an add-on where you can add on for each child and we'll do a mini reading so that you can really understand how your energy type works and how you can best operate and parent the children of the different energy types. Go to a freespiritlife.com, click on work with me, one-on-one sessions for all of those details. I am so grateful for you. Thank you for caring about this. Thank you for listening. And thank you for being you. Continue onward, being your most authentic self in this world and raising authentic children. You are doing your part to make this world a better place. Be well, my friend, and I will see you next time. Take it down.